Hi there YouTube, welcome back to another glorious day here in Norfolk. My name's Simon and in this video, which is the first of a two-part video, I'd like to show you some of the modifications I did to a Polish Army Lavu tent. things I did was to stitch the two halves of the, of the tent together. They come as two halves designed to be worn as ponchos but they just button together normally and I didn't want to have to button them together every time so I stitched them inside and out on both sides so that I didn't have to do that. I then added a zip which comes all the way down the front here to make it easy to get in and out. There's some velcro tabs which just close that off and form a sort of storm storm flap, storm closure. And I put another zip along the bottom here so you can zip that up. But if you wanted to have it open for ventilation, it's actually still protected by the main fabric itself. The other thing I added was a loop up here. I stitched that on and reinforced it with a bit of canvas so that should I not want to use the pole inside and I was able to, I could put a ridge line up here and I could suspend that to give even more room inside or I could just hang it from a branch uh, with a, a bit of paracord or whatever in a couple of clips. Um, but that just makes it a bit more versatile so that I can put this up without the pole should I need to. Okay, so around the bottom of the tent, normally it finishes here. Yeah, so it, 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 it comes down to a point on the ground and gives you restricted area inside. I wanted to have a bit more area and for there to be the ability to have a camp bed in there if I wanted to. So I decided to add a, an additional piece going right the way around. It's about a foot. Um, and that makes a dramatic difference to the amount of space you've got inside, loads more space. You could probably sleep three people, maybe four at a pinch inside this. Um, makes a huge difference. And that's just simply another canvas larvae, which I bought, which was damaged. Um, and I bought it purely just for the fabric, um, cut it into strips and sewed that all the way around the bottom uh, to create this side wall. On the bottom of that, I added some thick PVC um, to act as, a, as like a sort of snow skirt. You could pile snow on top of this if you're using it in snowy conditions, uh, or you can tuck that underneath to give a bit of extra protection around the edges, whatever you like. It was designed to be used either way. I tend to have them on the outside and any water that runs off, it just gets it a little bit further away from the tent. Um, and that's why I did that. On the corners, these grommets here come with it. Um, uh, I added paracord to be able to guy it out and I added additional grommets at the bottom of the skirt, at the bottom of the side wall, so that there's basically there's two pegs on each of the corners. Uh, one to hold it down, one to hold the fabric out into shape. Another thing I did was to use what would have been originally the armholes for this poncho, for the ponchos. I um, 
added a zip here as well, which is accessible from the inside. You can unzip that and use a stick to spread it for, for extra ventilation. And I've just put some Velcro tabs on there again, just to close it down in bad weather. And then finally, on the back of the tent, I uh, added another little ventilation window here with a storm flap. Uh, and there's a zip again, which runs all the way around in a half moon, um, which is accessible from the inside. And that can be unzipped, unzipped and uh, laid down for extra ventilation. So you've got a big zip you can open at the front for ventilation. You've got two of the armholes at the front for ventilation. I didn't bother with these ones. They're just sewn up, um, the ones on the back. And you've got another half moon ventilation here. Okay, let's take a look at the inside. So in the tent, uh, there's a few more modifications that I, cho that, I, that I chose to do. I wanted a ground sheet. So I cut a bit of this uh, tarpaulin fabric uh, to the same size, slightly bigger than the, than the base of the lavu, um, and added a little bit extra so that I could have a little bathtub style upstand to form a, a sidewall in the ground sheet as well. Um, that's attached to the lavu with Velcro. Uh, two reasons. Firstly, it made it much easier to sew on because I was only sewing around the edge of the lavu, uh, sewing the Velcro on, and like, well, likewise around the ground sheet. It was only sewing the edge. So that's all I had to run through the machine rather than trying to feed through huge amounts of fabric would have been impossible on my machine. So that was the first reason. The second reason is I wanted to be able to take this out and, and not use it on certain occasions. Like, in, you know, in the summer, if it's hot and I want to roll the sides up, I can do that. I can, I can simply undo it from the, from the Velcro, roll the sides up and I've got ventilation all the way around, keep it a bit cooler. Or I could just go without it and not use it. I've got, I've got that flexibility. Okay, the next modification I did was to change the pole. Uh, with the, with the larvae, when you get it, you get these aluminium um, sections here, which all slot together and they form a pole, which keeps the larvae up and in shape. I found that there was too much give here in this joint and it tended to flex and it gave a sort of bowed appearance like this and it just didn't seem very robust to me. So I decided to change that and made a pole out of ash. I've got a lathe so I was able to turn these into the correct diameter for a pole and I used some of this section as these parts here just to, just to uh, so they can slot together. Now the last modification I did is to add a place here where you can fit a stove jack. I've also made a stove for this tent and um, that's going to be that's going to form the second part of this video. Um, this is just a simple flap of canvas with velcro which I can take off that comes off completely and then um, a stove jack which I also made fits onto that square and is still protected by this flap here and the idea is that my flue can then come safely up through that hole and I can have a fire in there in winter to keep warm.